Ah, Miami. Beaches, beauty, brawn. Okay, so the condos may not be worth a million dollars anymore, but the view sure is. Zip across the causeway that connect the mainland to Miami Beach, and it's as if you're leaving your troubles behind. Unless you happen to be cruising along the Julia Tuttle Causeway, and you slow down enough to look at the side of the road. What are those tents doing along the water's edge? Hello? Hello? There is a distinctly permanent feeling to this scruffy encampment, and it's clear many of its residents don't want anything to do with inquisitive reporters. What did you do that you ended up here? Same thing everybody else did. Okay, thanks. What they did has made them pariahs. They are sex offenders, a makeshift colony of 71 outcasts living here under the bridge because the laws say if they go almost anywhere else, they will be sent right back to jail. So you got this million dollar view? It's not a million dollar view to me. What is it? It's a shame on Miami to me. One of the few men here willing to talk is Homer Barkley, a seemingly harmless guy, until you learn he was sent to prison for 10 years for attempted sexual assault on a 10-year-old girl. He first came here in January 2008. That's when he was released on probation. When I got to the probation officer, the probation officer also confirmed me that I had to come and live up under the Judy Total Causeway. They also told me that I had to go to the driver's license place and put it on my driver's license. Is it on your driver's license? Yes, sir. Do you have it? it? Can you show me? And what does it say there? Judy Total Causeway. Julia Tuttle Causeway. That's yeah. your home address? My home address is in, in Liberty City. Can you not live in Liberty City? I can't live in Liberty City based on the ordinance. The ordinance. You quickly learn that it's all about the ordinance and about a web of overlapping laws. In 2005, Miami-Dade County implemented residency restrictions that barred registered sex offenders from living within 2,500 feet of schools. On top of that, state law creates a thousand-foot buffer around schools, parks, and playgrounds, and for offenders on parole, school bus stops. Finally, there are 24 cities within the county that have their own residency restrictions for sex offenders. So this is Miami-Dade County, and this is what it looks like when you add overlapping circles of no-go zones. About all that's left are some million-dollar neighborhoods, some industrial parks, and the Julia Tuttle Causeway. This is my life right here. This is my life. As you see, it's so hard. I have to lay here. It's so hot in the tent. What's it like with the noise? It's like bumblebees in your head. What your television can't convey is the stench, a suffocating cocktail of sewage, urine, and trash. There is no sanitation here, no running water. Like most of the men here, Homer has to wear a tracking device. They tell me that I have to be here from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock a.m. in the morning. Do you feel like you're being punished a second time? Of course I do. If I don't went to prison and did all this time, why I'm still here? Why I'm still being punished? All I want is my life back. I uh, deserve a second chance at life. Meet Ron Book, a man who's not sure about second chances. The multi-millionaire Florida lobbyist is the architect of Florida's harsh sexual predator laws. For Book, it is a personal crusade. Eight years ago, he learned that the nanny he and his wife had hired to care for their children was physically and sexually abusing their daughter. The nanny went to jail, and Book went to work pushing Florida's politicians to make pariahs of all sexual offenders. He succeeded. There is a perception that the 2,500-foot law is so onerous in this community that it leaves nowhere or nowhere realistic for these men to live. Is that a fair perception? I think it's fair to have that discussion and that debate. Yes, it's difficult. Nobody said that someone exiting the prison system after committing a sexually deviant act on a child has a right to dictate where they live. It's my sense that, that the fundamental problem here is that nobody wants to defend sex offenders. And I think most people watching this will say, so be it. They, what they did was horrible. I have a daughter that was 12 years old when she was first molested and raped. I have a different perspective than many people. I sleep very comfortably at night knowing that we have made our community safer. 
County Commissioner Pepe Diaz sleeps well at night, too, knowing that he helped his county pass some of the toughest sexual offender laws in the country. And no time am I going to apologize for the law that I helped create along with my colleagues. That law has saved, to me, in my opinion, the innocence of a lot of children. Diaz will tell you he is not proud of the camp on the causeway. That is not a way to live for anybody. And also, in the, in the midst of one of our uh, bridges that, lives, uh, that goes to one of our main tourist areas in Miami Beach. But he has no interest in changing the law. Do you really think that there are sufficient places where these men can live legally in the county? Absolutely. That is not what the American Civil Liberties Union found. They have just released a study of available affordable housing for sex offenders in Miami-Dade County. In the entire county, just 15 units were available to sex offenders at a rent of less than $1,000 a month. And at rents under $750 a month, not a single unit qualified. So who was in charge of helping the sex offenders find a proper home? Meet Ron Book, the multimillionaire lobbyist who is head of Miami-Dade's Homeless Trust. No, don't adjust your TV sets. Yes, this is the same Ron Book who pushed for the laws that push predators under the bridge. And he's also the man in charge of finding them a proper home. You know how many sites we've chased over the last weeks? Um, and I'm still sort of optimistic that if we keep chasing sites, we're going to find three or four. Ron Book knows some people think his two roles are irreconcilable. I wear these two hats. In this particular case, they have run into one another. I don't want to use the word colliding, but, but they've run into one another. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a motion in circuit court asking that the local ordinances be invalidated and just the state 1,000-foot law be allowed to stand. Ron Book disagrees. Look, um, I've not been bashful about my feelings about people who commit offenses against children. I have referred to them as monsters. Um, everybody under the bridge knows that. I am not a monster. I'm a human being. I got family like you got family. I got family like they got family. I don't deserve this, man. If you felt like these guys did something so gross, then you should have sentenced them to life. You don't put them out and just cast them out and put them on a little land around, surrounded by the ocean. This is not right. For Nightline, I'm Jeffrey Kaufman on the Julia Tuttle Causeway in Miami.